Hey everybody, this is Hashem, you're watching Pushing Film, and today I want to talk about my way of minimizing dust with home processing of film and scanning, as well as some general handling tips. So feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter if you just want to get straight to the tips. Now it's been a little while since the last video, which was about a month ago, and I just wanted to say Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you're having a great start to the new year of 2021. I decided to take a little bit of a break over that period from making videos. The last thing I did was probably the live stream around this time last month. Sarah and I took a little bit of time away locally, nothing international, but it was great to have a bit of downtime. In other big news, I also proposed to her and she said yes, so I'm engaged now. And now that we're settling back into January, things are starting to pick up again with work and regular routine. And it's back to business with making videos. I'm really looking forward to all the stuff I have lined up for the next few months and the rest of the year and just continuing to grow this channel and the community surrounding it. So I get a lot of questions about dust often on Instagram or in previous videos that I've done in regards to scanning film especially. And I know that it's something a lot of people have a hard time dealing with, just dust in general. Dust. Everybody? No. So to start things off, I just want to say that you can't completely get rid of dust. Obviously, it's really hard. Dust is just inevitable, but there are steps you can take to minimize it. And these are my tips, things that I do to try and minimize that level of dust that you get when processing, handling and scanning your film. So the first and probably most important tip that I feel like a lot of people don't really know about is to use photo flow. When you're processing your own film, whether it's color or black and white, I know that with color process, it doesn't necessarily ask for that, but you can always do a final rinse of your film in photo flow with distilled water, ideally, with the correct amount of photo flow, which is often just a few drops mixed in a ratio of something like one to 200. And what it really is, is just a quick dunk in the photo flow solution after the final good clean rinse and wash of your film in other water. It's going to help prevent not only getting marks and drying and watermarks on your film, but it's also going to give an anti-static effect, which will help prevent dust from clinging onto your film while it's drying between the time it dries and that you scan it. A lot of people don't seem to really know about this, but I remember reading it on the data sheet, at least for Kodak's photo flow. I know there's other variants from Ilford and so on, but the solution itself has an effect of reducing static which is going to give you less dust. And that's what I've found ever since I've been using it, which was almost from the first time I started developing film, not only to reduce watermarks, but to reduce dust on the film when it dries. It's really cheap. And I think it's an essential part of any home process. Or even if you somehow have dirty negatives, you can always rewash them, remake a solution of photo flow, dunk them in there, put them out to dry. And it should make a good difference in minimizing the amount of dust that you have on your film. So the second tip I have is to hang your film to dry in a low dust environment. Don't leave it hanging in a room where you tend to spend a lot of time and there's a lot of movement. So ideally, and what I think most people already do, is to hang their film in somewhere like the bathroom or shower. This is really important as opposed to hanging your film to dry in maybe a room with carpeting or a lot of furniture and human and animal pet maybe movement. It's not going to be ideal because there's going to be more dust and lint flying around in the air that you probably can't even see and then it's going to cling to your film especially if you haven't used the photo flow in that final rinse. All right, so after your film's dried, my third tip is to make sure you try and use gloves when you're handling your film. Ideally, some kind of gloves like these. There are some gloves that are made of cotton that actually let out a lot of lint and fibers from the gloves themselves. So the ones I have, and I often get asked about these, they're a brand called Ansel String Knits. And I've been using these gloves for a while. I really like them. They're washable and they don't tend to release as much lint and fibers from the gloves themselves which is really good the only thing is it's hard to really find them online a lot of stores especially overseas if you live here in australia or i think the uk this is probably a more common brand that you can find online but i'll put the name in the description anyway and i've also found some similar gloves that are used for handling things like jewelry and have uh, lint free properties that i've put a link for an affiliate link in the description so if you go ahead and try those see how they go, especially maybe compared to cotton gloves, which I used in the past, but I stopped as soon as I found these ones, which are made from nylon, which whether you get one of the ones from the link or these or whatever, I suggest going with a material like nylon, which seems to work a lot better in my experience at least. All right, now the fourth tip I have, and this is assuming you're doing all your own home scanning, and it especially applies if you're doing scanning the way I do, which is using my digital camera and a macro lens sort of set up on a desk, is to wipe down the surfaces of the working area that you're using to digitize your film. So in my case, just wiping down with a damp cloth or sponge 
the desk that I use with the essential film holder and my camera setup and everything just to reduce the amount of dust that's going to move around on that surface while I'm handling everything on there. And if you are using similar equipment, it's good to go ahead and wipe that down as well, including the film holders and things like that, just to give you a nice clean surface to work on. And this also applies to your flatbed scanner if you're using something like that. With most scanners, I'm sure they could do with a good wipe with something like an anti-static microfiber cloth and a rocket blower, brush, whatever you need to use, but clean those surfaces that you're using to scan with or on before you go ahead and scan. And on that note, it's a really good idea to invest in something like one of these rocket blowers. I find them really handy and maybe even something like a brush that you can use to blow off any dust that's moving around while you're scanning as well. So if you're scanning entire uncut rolls the way I do, I give the film a blow every now and then, especially if I see any dust settling around on the film. That way it's not going to come up in your scan and it's just a bit less dust to have to remove later in something like Photoshop or Lightroom. So the next tip I have is to scan your film soon after it dries. Of course you want to make sure it's dried properly, but if you're not able to, you're not going to scan it as soon as it dries, take it out, put it in something like a Ziploc bag or one of these long plastic sleeves just until you get a chance to scan it or print it in the darkroom, whatever it is you're doing. More ideally, run it straight through your scanning setup and then file it away, whether it's in a Ziploc bag or proper sleeves, in which case you might be cutting them up. All right, so the seventh and last tip I have is to sleeve your film straight after you finish scanning it in case you are going to maybe scan it again in the future, print it in the darkroom, send off any extra negatives to get scanned elsewhere. That way your negatives are gonna stay relatively dust free as opposed to scanning them and just leaving them lying around to collect dust over the period of hours or days. I have done this before, uh, but I learned my lesson and now try and get into the habit of at least putting them away in some kind of Ziploc bag if I don't have the time to cut and sleeve them or just going ahead, cutting and sleeving them straight after scanning. So that's it. Those are my tips for minimizing dust with home processing and scanning. I hope there was at least something in there that you found useful or new that you can use to reduce the amount of dust that you have to deal with with your film scans. But what I'd like to know is what are your methods? Do you have anything that I haven't listed here? It'd be great for you to share it here in the comments on the video so that everyone else can benefit from your little tips and tricks. As I said, these are the things that work for me and I know there's other little things you can do to go even further to reduce dust. I have heard of interesting little things like anti-static brushes that you can use as maybe standalone product or attachments to your film holder or whatever it is. But these are the simple little steps that I find that I can consistently repeat and that work for me. And I get relatively clean negatives and scans that I don't end up having to Photoshop too much dust out of. I know a lot of people seem to deal with a lot of dust from what I've seen online and the questions I've gotten and some of the methods I've seen people use could benefit from a little bit more care in handling just to save you time behind the screen later. So once again, it's great to be back. I hope you're all having a great start to 2021. I'm looking forward to putting out more videos and growing the channel, as I mentioned. And that does mean the growth of things like the Discord server, which is really thriving and starting to pick up a few hundred users there at least and people that consistently chat. We've also had a meetup. So I do want to start doing meetups again now that restrictions have eased here in Melbourne. So if you want to continue to engage in the discussion and conversation regarding topics like today's or something else, please feel free to join the Discord server, which I put a link for in the description of this video. It's free and it's easy and it's a good way to stay in touch and be a part of this community and share your knowledge and thoughts with topics related to film photography. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next episode of Pushing Film.